Hi, this is Ruth Royal from Youth Pledge for Employers, and I'm really delighted to be talking to Julie Turner Adkin today from Healing Possibilities. Hello, Julie. Lovely to see Hi there. you. Hi there. <laughs> um, so, first of all, tell us a bit about your business, Healing Possibilities. So, I've been trading since um, the year 2000. Right. Um, and originally, it would have been massage. I did aromatherapy as well and reflexology. And then over time, I've gone more into the holistic. Um, th um, therapies which will be like Reiki healing, crystal healing is my right. absolute favourite oh, and yeah. more recently I've got into sound healing which is something that I think everyone can do. Um, you may be able to see behind me I've got a gong there. I can see your gong, yeah. yeah I just tip down slightly. Oh fantastic. So that's one of the ways that we're sort of learning to help people to heal them, mind and body um, and spirit by using sound. So I've sort of had a 22 year journey really um, and wow. it's been amazing. <laughs> so tell us about how you sort of got got into that because that's not the sort of career path you hear about at school is it? No probably not and I certainly wouldn't have known anything about that. Yeah. Um, I suppose I had a desire to help people and yeah. I did spend one day and it was one day as a um, an assistant at a nursing home and yeah. I realised that that sort of work really wasn't for me. I was probably far too young and just actually nursing elderly people. Yeah. I don't know, that just wasn't me and I just thought, oh, I've got to find a different way to do this. So I thought, yeah. I saw an advert to learn massage and anatomy wow. and physiology. So I started doing that and I found that um, the knowledge of biology would have been useful from school had I perhaps yeah. studied that a bit more. But with anatomy and physiology, you learn all of that. And the massage was something I absolutely loved, the actual you know, helping people with touch. I really, really enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah. So that was probably a good start. And then I learned aromatherapy, which is the use of essential oils with the massage. You can also make face creams with it um, and elixirs and things like that. So you can do aromatherapy in lots of ways. And we're using our senses. So smell is really important. We have memories instantly returned to us when so we true. smell certain things. So I mix the aromatherapy oils with the massage and aromatherapy massage is much more gentle, whereas the Swedish massage that I learned is more for absolutely physical things like sports injuries and stuff like right. that. So I suppose I really enjoyed doing that um, and I used to part and parcel with my office job. So I was a secretary and a receptionist. Oh, yeah. So oh, that's amazing. So you that did was both how things I, alongside each other to get your yeah, business going. Definitely from school, I was office based because that yeah. is what I thought you did. I didn't know there was other option. So I actually learned shorthand and typing. I don't think people use shorthand anymore on the basis like that. So that was my start. But yeah, the idea to go into massage was a huge thing. Um, I had two children, so I then sort of um, part time at work because I'd left to have my children. They were young. So I really wanted something I could do that would fit in with them rather than this nine till five, yeah. which is what I did before. So then I suppose moving on from there, um, I took my mum for a crystal healing, had no clue what that was, um, yeah. took a leaflet and then thought, oh, I'll perhaps try that. And it's sort of wow. the year 97 by this point. Um, so I started to learn crystal healing and that absolutely blew my mind away. The fact that the crystals all have an energy yeah. and they resonate to an energy and you can hold them, put them on the body and they help to make your energy balance up. I found that absolutely fascinating. But it wasn't an easy journey because not many people had heard of crystal healing back then. It was still yeah. relatively new, but I used to mix it in with the other healings that I did. And I suppose slowly over time, I began to do more of that. Um, I also am a clairvoyant, but that's not for everyone. But that's another yeah. skill that I've always had. But you don't have to have these extra skills to do the work that I do now. I train lots of people in crystal healing and they are quite logical people. And even they say they can enjoy using the crystals, you know, to help people heal. Oh, I also cool. learned Reiki. So that was many years after that and that was the funny thing because that's the key and if anyone knows about reiki it's an energy that you channel and it comes out of your hands you can't actually see it but people will say they can feel it so more people seem to understand reiki than crystals which i found bizarre oh that's interesting crystal you can hold you can feel it you can choose it but more people knew of reiki and in a funny way that changed my world because i would mix the treatments up so people would come for one or the other and they didn't know what I was doing. And I just found that absolutely opened the door, <laughs> which wow. was bizarre. 
So with the massage years of that, and I did used to do a very strong massage, my hands are starting to tell me that they don't like it because <laughs> it's hard work on I your hands. It does go really fast. Yeah. And I literally lost my grip. I couldn't hold things anymore. So I Gosh. knew I had to make that step. And I suppose for me to absolutely, in effect, sack all of my uh, massage people was difficult. I'd known some yeah. of them for 20 years. You know, they'd become friends over that time as well. Oh, but I had to do that for yeah. my safety of my hands. But now my world is very much filled with... Um, definite healing work I think massage and reflexology are healing I still do reflexology yes. but I think the holistic side we're using energy to heal is is a whole different thing and then in the last five years I've got more and more into sound healing um, and that is the we are made up of about 80 90 percent water when people are younger yes. much more so you know and the vibrations that come from sound helps to move that in our body and then helps us with our own healing. I like to help people they can heal themselves. I don't want them to keep coming back to me. I want them to be able to heal themselves in yeah. that respect. So with that sound came the gongs, came crystal bowls, and we, we've got some tubes that we play as well. Oh, and wow. I know run gong baths where people come and lay on the floor and a friend and I do it together and we play these gongs and different sounds. And people feel amazing afterwards so the evidence is there but it certainly changed my world into that and I suppose even though I've been doing it as long as I have I think there's a lot much opportunity for people to get into that right now years yeah. ago say so nobody knew what crystal healing was you know it's oh did you get them pebbles off the beach was the common thing people used to say yeah. but I think now lots more people are definitely up for that and I do see that as a way forward for younger people to get into younger, definitely. And so in terms of the sorts of training that you did um, and yeah. things like massage and I know reflexology and aromatherapy, there is quite a lot of training associated with a lot of those things. Very much. Yeah. So with with massage, you have to know about anatomy and physiology is a given that if you have people will come to you with their issues and you need to be you know, clued up as to what what you can do to help them and also how not to cause harm but there's lots of different forms of mass so i say the aromatherapy is much more gentle yeah. but the essential oils they all have you know um, different qualities so again that is quite a in-depth learning yeah. um, how long did that sort of take oh sorry so, that's all right. So I think the massage, I actually learned that at City College. I don't even know if they still do that there, to be fair. I haven't looked. I perhaps should have done. Um, that was a, a year's training, as was wow. the room therapy and as Gosh. was reflexology. So but again, I think once you're qualified, it's that practicing that makes yeah. you who you are. So that's definite that. So but move a bit forward now with Reiki, for example, I teach Reiki and yeah. I teach crystal healing and you can study that in a weekend of wow. course then you're not experienced but that's yeah. for you to do your own learning so you know I think the courses have certainly got quicker my crystal healing was a two-year training course Gosh. but for me that's a journey of me you learn a lot about yourself yeah. when you do these courses as with all courses I'm sure but I think now people want to learn things quicker and I think that's a good thing but what what brings whether they're a good therapist or not is their experience and I think that is for them to then get lots of practice but I know any student I have they're never short of people to want to have be practiced on so that's never a problem because <laughs> everyone likes to have a you know a bit of a healing or a bit of quiet so everyone's really up for that so oh, definitely that's, that's a really good tip I'm sure that is the case I'm sure yeah well oh, that'd be lovely have a bit of that and mm -hmm. I guess as well that not only do you have to learn like the techniques and the, understand the physiology because obviously massage you've got to know yeah. lots of things about people haven't you you know yeah. you've got to be very careful about how you approach things if people with Definitely. different conditions and things but um i just wondered if that like, you've also got to have sort of other skills as well haven't you i guess in terms of dealing with people yeah, definitely. The, the people skills are really important. Um, I suppose that's to learn to listen and not join in with a conversation because it can be easy sometimes to think that, you know, they become your friends, which they do over time. But it's yeah. very much a listening. And I, for me, I did actually take a basic counselling course because I was quite right. young. When I started these things and I will admit to start with people told me things. I was like, oh, I can't believe what they're telling me. But it's that place of confidence. And, you know, if people go to a GP, 
GP, for example, they don't have an awful lot of time to say how they feel. And often the condition that they go with, there's underlying reasons why they're not well. And I really believe that if we don't listen to our emotions, we then it can become physical in your body. The tension can make your body ache. Yeah. So I suppose my skill is hearing how people say things. And yes, I presume if you went on a counselling course, that would definitely help. For me, the skill is listening. And I suppose it's just offering someone that space to be able to to share how they're feeling, really. And that's usually all they need. They just want to tell someone they don't feel good. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's the case. But like you say, that um, that ability to listen to people, because, this, you know, we talk about listening, but actually it's quite a skill, isn't it, to really listen to people? Yeah. yeah. To and also, I think... For, yeah, with my massage, people came really regularly. They'd come, you know, once a month. With the healing work, it's different. They come for a while and then I don't see them for a while. And that's absolutely fine. But when people come, it's about not reminding them that they felt awful last time because every day is different. And I always, yeah. I have a, a firm belief that if you keep talking about the past, you bring it to the now. So you don't want to talk about an argument you had a month ago. You want to be able to just move on from that. So I will say to people, how are you today? And that is what I want to know, how they are today. Yeah. So I feel that's important to keep that in focus. Um, I've spoken to lots of different sort of complementary therapists um, uh, as part of Youth Pledge. And I've been really interested in the fact that actually you have to do quite a lot of sort of continual professional development don't you you know that actually in the same way if you're an HR practitioner and you yeah. you know you have to keep your legal knowledge up to date or yeah. what's happening you have to do a lot of professional development it's not like you do a course and you're done is it no I mean for for me um as we just discovered when I tried to join you my my nemesis is is the internet <laughs> and I've had to really drag my dinosaur claws out of the depths to you know get more tech savvy so luckily for me I was given a grant to help to be able to up my skills so that's um, Facebook Instagram I haven't looked at TikTok I don't think I want to but that's about getting used to that and being on Google another thing because years ago it was all word of mouth you know someone would tell someone and I had a you know yeah. very rarely advertised perhaps in a local parish magazine you know that's how long ago that I used to do that but as far as now people like to see that you like to see your face they can meet you before they even arrive and you know that is that skill I, I design my own website um, things like that I don't think you have to do that but for me I used to work with computers a lot so I you know I felt capable but again my skills are dated because I only know what I know so certainly with the help of different grants and people have upped my skills so I can send invoices to people have a online calendar so these are all skills yeah. you know if someone's thinking of doing computer studies at school I guess it will help them eventually you know to do things run their own business and better do a set of accounts and things like that you know it's all there's all un, un background skills that aren't anything to do with the actual healing work that's for sure and I and I guess that probably you um you you probably have to spend time though obviously I'm sure like the healing work is the the focus of your working weeks isn't it but I'm sure that actually you have to spend time doing administration and publicizing your business yeah. like you say keeping those things up to date in ways that people don't always think of so you might go off to run your own business in whatever it is you, you love doing yeah. and that you're good at but actually you've got to do a lot of other associated tasks as well yeah. Judy. and I think that's more so today I think years ago I say word of mouth easy I lived in a small village you know spread the word off we went but now there is a much bigger world and it's great because I do online healing as well so I've helped people in America Mexico um, you know that's limitless now and that is amazing you know you can um, do healings even when people aren't here you can send them healing that's a one of the Reiki skills um, but it's amazing how it's opened up the world so I do really like the internet but I also <laughs> only know what I know so that can be a challenge at times but as far as upkeeping your skills so with um, and I know that you're referring to about some bodies for example they like you to I forget what they're called to do um, some some learning every year I personally don't belong to a governing body I yeah. um, I have my own method of doing that but the passion I have for my work I want to keep learning something new exactly. and what people That's say of me is oh you're always trying something different because I it's just that and I suppose what I want to get across to people is you can do a job that you absolutely love and have it as your income because that is the way yeah. the healing world is now they want you to be able to 
earn money from doing healing and it, it's you know i think people understand that it's your time it's your training and it, it's a worthy skill to have oh that is absolutely brilliant i guess probably it's a note to end on if you could go back and speak to we sort of asked everybody this julie if you yeah. could go back and speak to young julie at the start of your career leaving school going off to do your shorthand course um, <laughs> yeah. what what bit of advice do you think you'd give yourself about careers? That I can do a job that I love rather than one that I think I should have. Oh, that's a really great piece <laughs> of advice. <laughs> to follow follow something you really enjoy. 